all in number this morning and mighty in spirit. gather to worship you as creatures of righteousness, made whole by the redeeming love of Jesus the Christ. Open our hearts to sing of your goodness, our minds to explore your wisdom, and our lips to give you all praise. Amen. Amen. Will all who are able please stand and join me in this concert call to worship? Happy are those who take delight in the law over the way of the righteous. May God come to us the righteous as we worship the Lord. Let us worship God. Our first hymn is number 318.
please join me in a responsive litany of affirmation. The testimony of God is greater than human testimony. God's testimony has borne witness to Jesus, the Christ. Whoever receives the word of God has life. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love the Lord and obey God's commandments. Whoever receives the word of God has life. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Whoever receives the word of God has life. Who overcomes the world? Those who believe that Jesus is the Christ. Whoever receives the word of God has life. Thanks be to God. say one thing, but we all know what happens. Life has a way of interfering. It does. And so that is why we trust in the Lord. Now I've shared my joy with you. What are your joys? What are your concerns? Yeah. Our joy, we had 15 of us in the family yesterday for Mother's Day. <laughs>
give their heart to God, give their mind to God, give their soul to God, it's breathtaking because not many people want to do this. You know, we struggle just being average Joes every day. And but when you make up your mind that you want to give your life to Christ and devote your time to his teaching and teaching others, that's heaven. That's heaven. But I had a thought. You know what makes Mother's Day so special? It's the adversities that mothers go through. And I wonder, Lord, are you watching our adversities? Are we causing you pain? <laughs> because that's what it is. It's the pain we receive from something that we gave life to. And I'm saying we. But you know what I'm saying. That's what they had gone through. Mm. Are there any concerns? We've, we've gotten our joys out the way. I've got a number of prayers on prayer cards uh, that we will include this morning uh, in our pastoral. struggling, so please keep her in your prayers. Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay. So let us take our concerns to the great healer, the one who runs the interference, the one who restores blessings upon us even when we don't see them. Let us pray. Compassionate healer, we lift up those who are in need of healing and restoration, physically, emotionally, or spiritually. You are the God of resurrection power, capable of bringing light from death and restoring what is broken. For Lord, we are your broken servants. We entrust these precious souls into your hand. May your healing touch bring comfort to the suffering, strengthen to the weary, and hope to the discouraged. We declare your resurrection power over every ailment, pain, and brokenness, Lord. Lord, mend the wounds of the heart, restore the vitality of the body, and renew our spirit. And may your resurrection victory shine brightly in their lives a testimony to your unswerving love and transformative grace in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. O oh God of comfort, we lift up those who are facing despair and hopelessness, who are broken in times of darkness when the weight of life challenges feels overwhelming, we ask for the light of Christ's resurrection to shine upon them. Lord, lift their spirits, O oh Lord, and remain with them and remind them that in you there is always reason to hope. And may they find solace in your promise, trusting that you are working all things out for them in the time of their anxiety and despair. May they find peace, Lord, and replace that feeling of desolation with a renewed sense of purpose and hope in their lives. Let the truth of the resurrection power breathe new life into their circumstances, illuminating their path ahead with unwavering hope. God of comfort and strength, we come before you on behalf of the elderly among us. As they journey through the last stages of their life, we ask for your abundant grace to fill their days, to provide them with physical strength, emotional comfort, and spiritual, spiritual vitality. And let your presence be in the source of souls as 
they navigate the challenges that come with aging and may they find your joy in every moment knowing that they are cherished and loved by you. Surround them with the caring individuals who honor their wisdom and experience and may their lives be a testimony to the richness of a life spent with you. And Lord, when there's discomfort, when there's anguish, when, Lord, we have nowhere else to turn, let us turn to prayer, the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples by saying, It is hard for us to learn to see Jesus in the most unlikely places, but he is always here among us, his image hidden within those around us. Let us open our eyes to Christ among us as we share the peace with each other, and may Christ, the peace of Christ be with you this day. Let's greet one another with love.
first New Testament reading this morning is from Acts 1, verses 15 through 17, and verses 21 through 26, and can be found in your pew Bible on page 1691. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120, and said, Brothers and sisters, the scripture had to be fulfilled in which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through David concerning Judas, who served as God for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in this ministry. Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So they proposed two men, Joseph, called Orsavus, also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belonged. Then they cast lots, and the lot fell to Matthias. So he was added to the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. The second New Testament reading comes from 1 John chapter 5, verses 9 through 13, found on page 1903 of the Pew Bible. We accept man's testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God, which he has given about his Son. Anyone who believes in the Son of God accepts this testimony. Whoever does not believe God has made him out to be a liar, because they have not believed the testimony God has given about his Son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. safe 
by that name you gave me, none has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scriptures would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I'm still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more as I am not of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal loving God, how great thou art. Lord, you foresaw that we needed your protection. Lord, you offered that protection in the name that the one your father gave you. And Lord, I pray that you allow us to use the same name to protect us when we are in peril or facing peril. Lord, have your way, but be with us, Lord. In Jesus' name that I pray, and the people of God will say,
It's the pressure. It's the stress. It's conflict. It's broken dreams. Life is full of adversities. And when Jesus says we have trouble in this world, he wasn't kidding. Hardly a day goes by when we don't face some type of adversity. Many are troubled. Like getting stuck in traffic or having a tiring day with a sick baby at home. Others are life altering, like a devastating diagnosis or the death of a loved one. But according to James chapter 1 2, we should all consider it joy when these trials of life come our way. They may not seem possible, yet it is when we choose to see our pain and our struggles from God's perspective, it doesn't matter very much. Who here this morning doesn't enjoy compliments or accomplishments? Most of us like being recognized for our own achievements, whether it's landing a big client at work or winning the chili cook-off or hitting the lottery training a baby to sleep all night. That's real happiness. <laughs> Justin knows about that. He doesn't have a baby, but he couldn't sleep last night. These are all good things, but God's purpose for us is so much deeper. And Galatians 5 talks about the fruit of the Spirit, reminds us that our character is more important God, and that's why he instructs us to walk by the Spirit so that the deeds of the flesh are replaced with God's attributes. Love is the foundation of all the virtues of life. We cultivate love by embracing God's fruit of the Spirit because of God's love and joy for us. Peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, but joy is contentment, regardless of our circumstances, and growing in it is an accomplishment worth celebrating this morning. You see, in the context of our scripture this morning, Jesus' petition is to his Father on behalf of his disciples. The prayer that Jesus offers for the apostles, in effect, that they find joy in their labor. These men are personally trained by Jesus with experience massive resistance when they preach. However, it is their teaching that will lead others to faith in Christ. And so it has been for more than 2,000 years. What Jesus says in our text has application for all believers this morning. The faith of these men is proven by their acceptance, their belief in the message that Christ taught them as he has taught us. Christ prays that these men will be strengthened in their resolve even as they are commissioned to remain in the hostile world as lambs to be slaughtered. The Bible is full of stories about people who are hurting, who are in pain. In Psalms 22, the writer cries, My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? When immersed in hurt, pain, sorrow, and strain, we too have questions and may cry out to the Lord, or we might withdraw in silence like Job, who endured staggering losses. But no matter how we experience the anguish of the adversity, we aren't alone when we invite God to come into our hearts. That's the joy. No question, the best personification of biblical joy is the story of Job. Are you kidding me, Pastor? He was stripped of every good thing he had on this earth, but he never lost his faith in God, a 
Job knew his experience was unfair, and he did not sugarcoat his pain when he went to the Lord in prayer. His conversations with God were frank, yet, yet he never forgot once who God was. He knew who the potter was. God did not promise us happiness, folks, but a full measure of joy. Grow, there is a big difference between joy and happiness. Happiness is a reaction to something great. Joy is the product of something great. Oh, they sound like pastor. Let us never forget, but there is a difference. And nor fail to enjoy both the happiness and joy fully on this earth. Jesus died to erase our guilt, pain, stain, and shame. And every day we should seek his grace and his faithfulness to give us his mercy. And when we are quick to confess and forgive others, we can move forward in the freedom of repentant life. You know, there's something about absolution when you forgive, but more than that, when you ask for forgiveness. That's joy. Another difference between joy and happiness is substantial. We often assume that the fleeting feeling of happiness, that giddy laughter, that contentment in the comfort of life is affiliated to the joy we experience in Jesus. Not quite. But this joy that our Savior gives us is supernatural and it sustains our souls in seasons of heartache, injustice, death, and sorrow. And enduring the valleys of life is nearly impossible without the life-giving fuel of Jesus' joy for us. You know, Mary, our Lord's mother, experienced much pain as she waited in agony, but yet she had joy. There's another character in the Bible who I am fond of. And that is Paul the Evangelist. Paul was an extraordinary man. He knew how to rejoice when things went well. But as the Lord said, even the Gentiles rejoice when things go well. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Nothing especially Christian about that, is there? What is extraordinary about Paul is how unbelievable and durable his joy was even when things were going sideways. For example, Paul said, I am overflowing with joy in all of my afflictions. Imagine, you hurt me, but you got joy. Okay. To gain spiritual perspective of joy in the midst of pain and sorrow, consider what Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 33. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and will not fade away. And I have reserved a place for you in heaven. Hmm. That's real joy, folks, to know that God, when you are following his message, his teachings, he has a place reserved for you. Joy isn't just a feeling, it's an awesome Assurance of confidence overflowing within us because of who we are and what we have in Christ. His joy becomes our joy. And when he says, my joy for the disciples in his full measure, that includes each one of us. Bless 
blessed are you when men hate you. Be glad in the day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. Second, joy comes not from man, but the Holy Spirit, not of our own efforts or our imagination or our family upbringing. The faith of the Spirit is joy, and spiritual speaking, we receive the word in much tribulation with the joy of the Holy Spirit. How else should we look at it? Joy comes from belonging to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not just a eating and drinking affair as we hope to sit at the table with our Lord, but it's a righteous one filled with peace and the joy that no longer we day to day. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Whoo! Those are words that we want to hear. Yes? Yes. Joy comes from seeing and knowing Jesus as Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. And joy comes from fellow believers who work hard to help us focus on the source of joy rather than deceitful circumstances that the devil would allow us to see. And when we're going through difficult times and pains and disappointment, do these experiences change your conduct or your disposition? Yeah. Are you one person when life is running smoothly? Or are you a different person <laughs> when hardships come upon you? We've all been there. And although trouble has the power to take away our happiness, listen to this, although trouble has the power to take away our happiness, you don't let it rob you of the joy you see, circumstances may change. Trouble will come. But those who have trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior, their relationship with Him will never be altered. And the fact is, the foundation is the joy in every situation. You need to change your perspective if you want to experience some joy. When Paul wrote the book of Philippians, he was in prison chained to a Roman guard, and even though he wasn't sure what awaited him on the other side, he was suffering the hardships of prison life. But his letters to the Philippians was filled with joy. Oh my goodness. Towards the end of the letter, Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. I say again, rejoice. Paul had every reason in the world to be miserable and unhappy, but his focus was not on his external condition, but on his relationship with the Lord. His relationship with the Lord. His joy-filled experiences didn't match his environment or his circumstances, but in the midst of all these difficulties, Paul had triumphant joy that overcame his circumstances he remember my joy, not your joy, but my joy, the joy that Christ gave him. And as a rule, we grieve when we lose something of something. And the obvious cause of grief is the loss of a loved one. And we also experience grief deeply when we lose a family member. We are attached to that pet. We grieve too. We grieve too. To grieve is the experience of deep sorrow. It's painful. And have we given any thought that our hurtful words, our speech sometimes, our childish behavior may cause the Holy Spirit to grieve? As a rule, We don't think about those things because you're selfish. But when you allow God to come into your circumstances, you experience his joy. And last, my joy, my joy comes from the satisfaction and satisfying effects of tribulation. We also 
exalt in our tribulation, knowing that tribulation brings to perseverance and persevering proving character and proving character hope. Consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various thrills. But know this one thing. If you are in Christ, Christ has prayed for you, and he's already given you something that man cannot give you, and that's his joy. And he prayed to Father, Father, give them the full measure of my joy. Amen. Amen. Father God, as we come to you this morning, Lord, we know that life and circumstances and this journey in life is far short with peril. But Lord God, we thank you for every minute, for every experience, because Lord God, we know that you surround us with your Holy Spirit. And for that, Lord God, we are thankful, but more than thankful, we have your joy <laughs> to contend with. Thank you, Father, for blessing us in such a way that your joy will always remain with us. Amen. Amen. Our next hymn is, I Want Jesus to Walk With Me, on page 506. <laughs> Others are being maligned. 
And Jesus had nothing. But he gave life. He gave us a life. Let us sing the doxology as the offering comes forth. name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Our next hymn is, Here I Am, Lord. 